the guy you are dating, you know in your heart that this man is irresponsible. He has shown me, he doesn't hide you. What are you doing with him? Girl, run away. Marry a man who has, I'm not saying physically like broad shoulders. No, a man who has shoulders ready to say, yes, this is what I want. You don't want a man who is going to tell you you are the burden in his life. It is because of you and the children he cannot achieve his dreams. Tell him to go and achieve his dreams before he comes to marry you. Not a guy you are pushing every day, reminding him, will you marry me? Marry me now. Marry me tomorrow. No. So imagine you are dating somebody or you marry somebody who has a hot temper. You are finished. He will give you a slap, beat you, blue black, blue black. And even you, if you have a hot temper as a woman, I will not advise any man to marry you. Some people get punched when they are pregnant, they lose their pregnancy. What kind of life is that? So please, if you don't listen to anything else, listen to this one. You want a man, single ladies, you want a man who has self-control. If he cheats on you when you are dating, run. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Stella on there, Stella TV. What we do most on this channel, apart from talking, is having a drink together. Cheers, guys. Today, I have a fabulous topic for the singles. Every single person has the question, who is my soulmate? That is the biggest question of all. Today, I'm bringing you 16 ways to determine who, for you to know who your soulmate is. I mean, these are the things you just have to look at before you can say, yes, I want to spend the rest of my life with this guy. Number one is you want a man who belongs to the Lord. You say, oh, I don't do religion. I'm not a Christian. Forget that thing. All of us are on this earth put here by somebody. And that person is our God in heaven, the Father Almighty. And Jesus Christ, the Son, who came to die for you, came to die for me. So even if you run away from him and say, oh, I'm not religious, I don't do such things, there will be a point in your life when you will need God. And marriage is one very, is the biggest decision you will ever make in your life. I'm serious. So you better include God in it. But most importantly, find a man who belongs to the Lord. Because if he belongs to the Lord, he will submit to God. If he submits to God, that means God controls him. That means he fears God. That means he will do the things God asks him to do when it comes to your marriage. All the good things, which I'm going to list. Number two, the single women especially. Find a man who is independent of his parents. Are you listening? A man independent of his parents. If you, if you, want, a, if you want to marry a husband, you want a man who lives by himself. I'm not saying he has to live in a story building. I'm not saying he has to have all the money in the world. No, no, no. Even if it's one room he lives in, even if he shares with his friends, he's independent of his parents. Maybe together, when you're coming together, you'll find a place for yourself. So it, the Bible tells you that a man shall leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave unto his wife. The two shall become one flesh. I don't know any woman or any, you know, who wants to live in the same house as his parents. You want a man who can make decisions for himself. Not a man who is tied to his mother or his father's apron strength. Not a man that when you are dis making, dis uh, making decisions in your home, he has to consult with his parents before he comes back to you. You want a man independent of his parents. That is what the Bible wants for you. And you better want it for yourself. The truth is, a man who is independent is emotionally, he's not emotionally dependent on his parents. And he's not financially dependent on his parents. He's not physically dependent on his parents. He's not socially dependent on his parents. He's not a man that must see his parents every weekend for him to be normal. Come on. He's not a man who has to attend every every week. He said the time he will use to build his own family together, he's using it to spend with his parents. No, that's not what you're looking for. A man who has good morals. Do you know what I mean? A moral, sometimes your, his parents might not even be like strong morally, but he himself knows right from wrong, you know. He has good morals. He's strong about that and, you know, he's ready. He's independent. He, he wants to, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
that is the that 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 is the quality you are looking for. It's all these things I'm going to tell you. It's your life. You can make the decision. You can decide. You know what? I want to marry a man who who is still living at home. There are consequences. You know, there are consequences for every action we take. So if you don't listen to sound advice of those who have been there, done it, seen it, and you decide I'm going to do it your own way, that's fine. As long as when there are fallouts, when the consequences come, you wear your big girl pants and say, yes, it, this was my decision, I made a mess of it, and I'm going to lie in it. As I make my bed, so I'm going to lie in it. As long as you can do that, beat your chest and say, yes, I made a very bad decision, I'm living with it, that's fine. But for those who are willing to learn, I just want to share with you. Number two, a man who is independent of his parents. Number three, that the Bible wants you to consider and follow is a man who is caring and loving. Single people, listen. A man who is caring and loving. There are a lot of marriages today in which the husbands or the wives are not caring and they are not loving and they are living a miserable life. I'm sure you that you're watching or listening, you know so many couples like that where the love is gone, you know, and care is gone to the wind. You want somebody who is going to take care of you and love you the way, and you see that goes to number one, that ties in with number one, a man who belongs to God, a man who fears God, God is love. If he fears God, he himself will embody what love means and he will know how to teach you. Not a man who is still discovering what love is. What is that man going to give to you? You cannot give what you don't have. It's as simple as that. So you want a man who you can see in his life. He loves his parents. He loves his siblings. You know, he loves, he, he, he can love you. But you, you can see it in him. Because if he doesn't have it, he can't give it to you. Number four, you want a man who is willing to yield his body to you. I am not talking about sex before marriage. That's fornication, guys. That is, God frowns at that. He said we should flee fornication. So that is not what I'm talking about. A lot of single people are engaging in premarital sex. Uh, it's fornication. There's no decent way to put it. And it, it offends God. So that's not what I'm talking about. In marriages, do you know that there are some people, some husbands and some wives, they are married, but they don't, they don't give themselves to each other in sex, in intimacy. They don't do that. They withhold it for one reason or the other. It's not biblical. It's against God's rule. In marriage, it tells us that your body is no longer your own. I will put the scriptural verse for you. Your husband's body no longer belongs to him. And you, you as a wife, your body no longer belongs to you. Once you marry, your body belongs to each other. You determine when you have sex. You determine when you are, you know, intimate and all that. You it can, it could be spontaneous. It could be too, it, it, it can never be too much, but it can be too little. And because look, it, when it, it, it transcends the physical. Having, you know, sharing a bed together and loving each other through sex and intimacy, it's a spiritual thing as well. So you are connecting. There's a deep emotional connection that goes with it. Take that out of the equation and your marriage is like a carcass. I'm not talking about sex on his own. Sex and intimacy. Because, come on, a guy can go and sleep with a prostitute. And that's just sex, right? But you don't, you don't build a marriage on that. Make sure you talk about it before you get married. So you don't withhold sex. Not when you are angry, you withhold sex from your husband. Or when your husband is upset with you, he will withhold sex. No. It's somebody who will be able to follow God's commandments. Number five, you want somebody who has courage and determination. Somebody who is courageous. Marriage takes courage. Sticking to marriage through ups and downs that will come takes courage. You want somebody who has courage to, of his conviction to go after his own dreams. Somebody who has courage to stand up for you. Somebody who has courage to protect you because challenges will come. He needs to be able to defend you. You don't want a coward for a husband. 
When I was growing up, my, my dad used to say cowards die many times before their death. You don't want that. You want somebody who has determination to, you know, take care of his family, determination to succeed. Not necessarily a millionaire. No. You want somebody who is determined, is always, you know, just going on and on. Not somebody who, every little thing. You know what I mean? So, guys, you want that rare quality. Courage is a rare quality. You'll be surprised at how many, there are so many cowards in this world. But a man who has courage, a man who is determined to forge on in your future, to take care of you and your children, that is the man for you. A man who will stand by you no matter what. A man you'll be proud to stand by no matter what. Number six, I'm going to have to split this video guys into two because it's quite long 16 is long so i'll split it into do i'll do eight today and then i'll do eight in the in the next video okay part two so number six you want a man who has the rare quality of being who has self-control he's able to uh, control his will and his temper listen to me a man who can control his will and his temper. You want somebody who is self-disciplined, not somebody you have to monitor to do the right thing. You don't want that. A guy who has self-control, who, who can control his will, is a guy who will not cheat on you. You don't have to check snoop on his phone. You don't have to um, send a, 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 a go crazy enough, get so paranoid that you, you want to go and send um, a private investigator to check him out. Not a guy who will come out smelling of another woman's perfume and, and give you wishy-washy reasons. No. You want a guy who can control himself, his will, in so many aspects of life, and a man who can control his temper. The Bible tells you that you should not even make friends with people who have a hot temper. He said, from such people, stay away. Don't associate with them. He said, otherwise, you will become like them and you will be ensnared. I will put, I didn't say it, it's in Proverbs. I will put it there. So imagine you are dating somebody or you marry somebody who has a hot temper. You are finished. He will give you a slap, beat you, blue black, blue black. And even you, if you have a hot temper as a woman, I will not advise any man to marry you. You've got to be able to work on yourself. Put your temper in check. Because there will be so many situations that would hit you, you know, that you want to just lose it at work. At home and the easiest people because you know at work you get paid a lot of men zip their mouth right their frustration their anger the disappointment they will, they will see it but when they come home as soon as their wife makes pen they beat her first they go and get drunk and they will come to that that's another point so you will be his punching bag you will be the one who receives the beating a slap here today tomorrow a kick Next tomorrow, some people get punched when they're pregnant, they lose their pregnancy. What kind of life is that? So please, if you don't listen to anything else, listen to this one. You want a man, single ladies, you want a man who has self-control. If he cheats on you when you are dating, run. You want a man who has self-control. Because you, by the time you have to be jealous, you know, by the time you have to be thinking, the time you'll be using to do something productive in your family's life, you know, growing yourself helping your husband to grow helping your son to grow helping your daughter to grow you are busy trying to see whether your husband is cheating waste of time gives you heartache you probably die in the process what you don't want that so you want a man choose wisely choose carefully that is number six number seven another quality you have to look for in a man a man who is ready to commit to you a man who does not have a uh, commitment phobia who is not running away from marriage Marriage is something that you have to want. You have to love it. You, have, you want to marry this person. You've chosen each other and you want to spend the rest of your life together. Marriage is tough enough. I mean, because there will be so many challenges. Growth brings challenges. Do you understand? Progress brings challenges. Success brings challenges. So you're going to have some challenging times and all that. You don't want a man who is going to be regretting Asking you to marry him just because things aren't working well. No, you don't want a man who is going to tell you you are the burden in his life. It is because of you and the children he cannot achieve his dreams. Tell him to achieve his dreams before he comes to marry you. If that is his, if that is the problem, 
Tell him to go and achieve his dreams. You don't want a man who's going to blame you for sh for putting a golden shackle on his finger and on his wrist so that he cannot play with his boys. You don't want that. You want a mature guy ready for commitment. Not a guy you are pushing every day, reminding him, will you marry me? Marry me now. Marry me tomorrow. No. He has to be willing. If a guy wants you, he's the one that will tell you, let, let us go and see your parents. He's the one that will say, um, when, babe, when are you getting, when are you ready to, you know, I want to put a ring on your finger. He's, he should be excited to commit to you. Look for that quality in him because that excitement will carry you through the, you know, your marriage because there will be times you will think, ah, I chased this girl, no. Don't make it that easy for him. If you have been dating a guy one year and he hasn't asked you to marry him, ask yourself, what am I doing with this guy? Is he commitment ready? Find out what is, what is going on in your situation that can be hurried along. You don't need a massive uh, bridezilla wedding or anything. No. It's about committing to one another. Your wedding is more, your marriage is more important than just the wedding reception and the invited guests and the cake and the dancing and your wedding dress. It's more than that. It's about sharing a life and love, you know, together. Number eight, this is the last one for today. And part two, immediately I will bring it out, guys. You want a responsible man. There are so many. You want a trustworthy man. You want a reliable man. There are too many marriages in which the men are irresponsible. Don't add yourself to that, that statistics. Please. There is, there is enough problems in this world. We don't need another irresponsible man. If the guy you are dating, you know in your heart that this man is irresponsible. He has shown me. He doesn't hide you. What are you doing with him? Girl, run away. Pack and go now. He's not the only man in the world. You want a responsible man, a guy who will stand up to be counted when it comes to, you know, taking responsibility. I am not saying the man has to pay for everything. Ladies, that is not what I'm saying. Your husband doesn't have to pay for everything if he doesn't have the money. If you are well off more than him, you will pay more. That's my, that's what I advocate. That is not, I'm not talking about just financial responsibility. No, 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 no. I'm talking about taking responsibility to be a dad, to be a, a, a husband, to be a man who will be, even if you're the one paying, you know, he's, he's doing his role. A man who will, you know, take care of you. A res, you know what I mean by a responsible man? Not a man that will check all his responsibility as a husband to you and to your and a, and a father to your children and you will now make your own dad and mom to become your husband or your siblings to become your husband no 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 no. a man you can count on all the children have recital he will show up all the children are playing football he will show up all the children are they, at least if he doesn't have to show up for everything let him show up for most of it it's not just you this this parenting is for both of you the, the, both of, the children need both of you in, in his life to you know the, for, for them to be well-rounded adults so you need a man who will take his share of responsibility just like you are going to take a man who will take of you when you are pregnant and possibly sick and unable to do anything and when you give birth for the next two three four five six weeks you might not be able to do nothing a man who will take charge if he's not doing it he's paying somebody to do it but he's available and ready to shoulder those responsibilities. Marry a man who has, I'm not saying physically like broad shoulders, no, a man who has shoulders ready to say, yes, this is what I want. It's a big decision, a man who is ready. That is a man for you. So today, guys, I've given you eight qualities based on the Bible, on the man you should marry, the husband material, guys. Please, like I said before, this is your life. Don't waste it. Don't spend the next 10 years before you divorce, before you now regret and say, had I known. Please share this video to all the single people you know. You never know who you'll help. And I'll bring the, the next eight um, qualities. So until next time, guys, we're single girls, make wise decisions. This is my book, Get Undressed. I hope 
you get it available on his speed dating gone wrong it's available on amazon Kobo and all the online retailers if you buy it let me know thank you so much for leaving me comments deb j vivian chica Indeed, everyone who left me comment thank you so much please keep the comments coming what are your thoughts what do you think about each of these quality do you think they're really important let me know until next time is your guest teller stay blessed god bless